Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Today is going to be Stone Garden and as usual, yes, we're going to use one Stamina DPS, one Magic DPS, one Tank and one Healer so that no rolls are left out. Now this dungeon can be quite a challenge for most people. It doesn't have as many bosses as most of the um, DLC dungeons used to have because some of them had up to five. But this one actually has an individual hard mode for every encounter. So there are three major encounters and each one has its own individual hard mode if you choose to do them. However, if you don't apply the first one, you can't do the next and so on and so forth. So you can go through it normally if you want. But order of priority as per usual, the big stuff needs to be taunted and turned away from the group. So you have to watch out for these werewolves and also watch out for the two-handers. The two-handers have a nasty heavy attack. If you do get caught by that as a DPS, you are likely to die unless of course you block it. But along the way you're going to find these little mushrooms. These things here you have to pick up because they are useful for the secrets. Yes, we have secrets in here as well. Not just individual hard modes, but secrets to go alongside of them. They will benefit you once you get there. Now, this white wolf here is very much like Mylene from the Moon Hunter Keep dungeon. It's very, very nasty. Big heavy attacks and lots of lightning going down on the ground. You have to watch your feet and you must turn this away from the group at all times. They are quite um, tricky to take down, so you have to make sure that you do not keep standing in their face if you are a healer or a DPS because you will die. Obviously, dance around a room in circles is not going to help you necessarily, but you do have to mind your feet for the lightning. Now, most of the ad pulls on the first part of the dungeon are actually quite safe, apart from the white wolf. Again, even in this pull here, you have to make sure that's the tank that you turn everything away from the group and mind the two-handers. Sword and boards can knock you over, of course. They do hurt, but the two-handers are the one that do the most of the damage, so you have to make sure you grab those first. Of course, if you are a tank that likes to pull stuff in and pin it up and only taunt the big stuff, that's absolutely fine. But if you can grab everything individually, that will also help quite a bit. But the main ones that aren't going to be too much of a problem for the group are actually the archers. So you can leave those ones be as long as they're controlled. Now, we're going to go into the first boss here. As you can see on the right-hand side, there's a button that we can press in order to activate the hard mode. If you don't activate this, you have the regular version of the boss and it's much, much easier to manage. But the hard mode version is what we're going to demonstrate. The hard mode has extra mechanics, the regular mode has less health and doesn't have the big horrible debuff that you're going to see. So, nice semicircle around the boss, watch out for his swing attacks, because once he does his punch, 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 he'll then break and knock you across the room. What you need to do is, when that's coming up, you need to block and then break free and then interrupt very, very quickly. When he does his stomp, you need to get out and then come back in again. If you don't do that, you're going to get in trouble because the whole get out, get in mechanic has actually got a double edge to it. If you stay in, you die. If you stay out too far, he'll charge at you. If you never, ever stay too far away, he will never charge at the group. So get out, get back in again, watch your feet. These AoEs do put a mitigation uh, resistance reduction, if you like, debuff on you. As you can see on the end of my buffs and debuffs at the bottom there. But there is another one that does stack with the group and it's quite nasty. So after his swipe, 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 the second one, he breaks, you interrupt. You have to block that break. Because otherwise, you will get a nasty debuff on you. The whole group needs to be able to block, then break free, then interrupt. The debuff itself, as you can see on there, it looks like a werewolf. It's red and there's a one tick in there. That can be completely avoided throughout the whole fight as long as you do that on time. But if you don't, then it's going to stack and stack and stack. And it's a nasty, nasty drain on your resources. And you will struggle very, very hard. So again, the trick to this is to watch his mechanics, especially the heavy attack, obviously for the tank. And basically, every single time he does his second swipes, and sometimes he does it in a little bit of an obscure order, that's when you need to block, let him break you across the room, you break free from that, and then bash. As you'll see here, he's going to do swipe, swipe, swipe. Everybody block, break free, interrupt. If you don't do that, every single time the group fails to block, break, and go back in again, you will, of course, stack debuffs and it will get more and more and more aggressive you get up to five you're not likely to pass it unless you basically just heavy attack rotation all the way through now you can pass the entire fight never seeing a single one of those debuffs if you're very careful but of course we have to demonstrate what they look like for the purpose of the video we've got two on us at the moment which is not too bad but like i said again if you get up to five you're gonna be in some real trouble so always pay attention to that mechanic after his second swipe which is during his whole rotation hold block break free once you're flung interrupt him and then as soon as that is over he will stomp the ground and it will repeat throughout the entire fight as you can see here same again break bash get ready to get out big stomp is coming so watch your resources get out get back in again you must get in very very quick yes of course the aoe's on the ground do hurt like we said earlier yes they do apply a debuff to your resistances but if you're not really getting hit by anything it's not a major problem in the first place it's just a tank that's got to be careful 
Get out, get in, hit the boss. After his second swipe, he's going to do the break. Interrupt, get out, get in, rinse, repeat throughout the fight. It never, ever changes. The only time it changes is if you run away. And if you're the one doing that, you're going to get charged at. Avoid it. If you're on regular vet, then of course, there is no major debuff. There's a lot, lot less health. And it's a lot, lot easier to manage. Just hold him in the middle and beat on him. Now here, you're going to be shown some mechanics that are important for the next boss. As you can see, there's a big, big AoE going around the room, and it is aimed at one player. And you have to kite it around the room without putting it through the group if you can help it. If you get caught by it, you'll take damage and you'll be drained. Your resources will be drained. If you avoid it, obviously they won't be. But if you run it through the group, you're going to affect them as well. So pay very close attention to that. There are some other mechanics that these um, have as well, where they have light and fire and ice, but that's going to be more relevant when we actually get to the boss. But this is basically showing you the main mechanic that you're going to have to try and work with. Every single one of those enemy types can do that. Again, remember along the way, we do have to pick up mushrooms. So if you see any green mushrooms on the ground, pick them up, because we're now going to go off into the first secret. Um, also, don't forget your treasure chests, of course, and heavy sacks. We don't normally do those in the video, but never mind. We've got some... Uh, some rubbish loot. Now, the secrets give you a buff. Each one will give you an individual bonus. One will actually be um, recovery for magicka and stamina. The other will be for weapon damage and spell damage. And the other will be increased to health. Now, there are many dungeons in the game now, especially DLCs, that do have these types of buffs and bonuses from secrets. And this is one of the early ones. This is the third one I think we've actually had. But... Before we get there, you are going to see another mechanic that is very, very useful. And you are going to have to understand what these abilities do. Because you're going to be doing this on the last boss. So, secret coming up shortly. This guy here, big behemoth werewolf, juffy face. You have to kill him, obviously. And then some synergies drop on the ground and you pick them up. You will be turned into a massive, massive werewolf. Yes, very exciting. Now, while you can run into the room and smack stuff to shit and back, there are some rules. So, on regular, obviously jump in, smack stuff. But on hard mode, you're going to need to understand the abilities. Abilities from left to right. The first one is a taunt and or spammable, but it taunts, so be very careful. Your second one is a gap close, which makes you charge across the room. Number three is an interrupt, big slam in front of you. Number four is a stomp on the ground, so it will actually hit and knock out things from long range with a big uh, eruption across the floor. And the last one is a double-edged skill. It's actually two skills. Starts off activating as a heal, so you keep it on you as a buff and all the damage you do will heal you. And then it turns into a breath ability, which is all ice and area of effect. So those are the things you need to pay attention to. Plus you have your ultimate. Your ultimate is very important because you will need to use that to either interrupt or buff your group, or both in fact. So when they take a synergy from the int from the uh, ultimate, everyone will be able to heal from the damage they do and they'll be doing constant crits. So it's really, really important that you know what those skills do. You are going to need to use them strategically on the last boss. Now, this is how you get into the secret, of course. We did glaze over that slightly at the beginning just so you knew it was coming. You activate this, the uh, ability there on the pipes after you've killed the adds. Just bear in mind, don't go running in there like I did. Make sure the tank goes in first. Once you pick up the recipe off the side the potion if you like that will give you a bonus all three secrets are kind of like this but they do have ads in there that you have to deal with and they are very very strong most people actually wipe to those first times they don't expect them to hit that hard make sure the tank goes first so that's secret number one out of the way you do have to open the door to get in there you will need some lock picks these enemies again will show you a mechanic that are coming up on the next boss so again, watch out for the big, big circle of danger. That's what you have to kite around the room. If they punch their fist into the ground, a lightning effect will erupt from underneath you and you need to block it. Very simple. Same again, block it. So that's a new mechanic for you there. You've seen one already with the kiting around the room and now you've seen two. There are actually two more. There's going to be ice and fire. The ice you will have to get out of and you can have the effect cleansed, otherwise you'll be snared. And the fire you can also get out of, but again, you'll have to have that cleanse because otherwise you will take loads and loads of damage over time. This pull is quite tough, so be careful. Make sure you turn the white wolf away from the group while maintaining taunts on the big stuff. Obviously, two-handers and sword and boards are very important because they apply CC and big hits. Mind your feet. Don't run into other group members. Don't get caught by lightning. If the tank can hold these all together and the group can stay behind them, you should be absolutely fine. But if you start running in front of the wolf, you're going to die. Now, there are some um, rather 
fast paced mechanics that are coming with the next boss, they will start overlapping quite aggressively. So make sure you can maintain your stamina resources, regardless of which class or role you are, because you are going to need it to run. Now, the big kite AoE, as you've seen here, you know what to do with this one. Avoid it. There are going to be big bursts on the ground of fire. This is the new mechanic I was talking about earlier. Stay out of it, otherwise you get a fire dot on you. If it happens, don't panic. The healer or yourself can cleanse it. If you're a warden, you can use the betting etch, obviously. If you are a templar, you can use purify. And if you are not, then of course you can take purify or purge, I believe, from the support skill line. If you have that in your group, it's going to be bloody expensive, but that will actually get rid of it for everybody. The final mechanic, which you haven't seen yet, is the ice one. Again, pick up all these mushrooms. You need them to go into the secret because you use that to get your potion or to get your buff, if you like, after you've turned on the electrics. So, final room of ads here. This is where you get to see the ice mechanics. If you look very carefully on the ground, you will see some ice come up underneath our feet, excluding, obviously, the kite mechanic, which you've already seen. And this is where you will get snared to hell. So if you get ice on your feet and you've got the big kiting AoE mechanic at the same time, you're very slow. It's going to be almost impossible to get away from it. So you have to make sure that the ice mechanic is, of course, cleansed. If you are the healer and you're cleansing people, then, of course, make sure that you keep an eye on your group. If you see anyone with a flame effect or an ice effect, you want to make sure you purge it as soon as possible. Now, as you can see here, we are standing inside of the kiting AoE uh, mechanic. You can do that. If your group is bringing lots of recovery for you all to share. If you are built for that, you can get away with it. But you're going to have to be on top of your heels. If you struggle too much and your resources get nuked, you are stuffed. Now this fight, there's your hard mode, is quite rough. But there's a very simple trick to this. Turn the boss away from the group. And when the ads wake up, kill the ads. And then back to the boss and so on. Just keep doing that. But the longer the fight goes on, obviously, the more aggressive it's going to get. As you can see here, you've got the stomp or punch even, which is your lightning. You can block those. Then he will go into one of two phases. He will either put ice on the ground or fire. As you saw in the previous fights with the breadcrumbs kind of uh, mechanic, which Zoss always does. They show you what's going to happen before you get there. Then you should be familiar with their effects. However, if you're not, this is what it looks like. That is the fire mechanic. There will be lots and lots and lots of dotted fire AoEs on the ground. If you get affected by them, don't panic. Don't stand in them, obviously. But make sure that you're getting cleansers or taking synergies from Purify if you've got that in your group. Whichever you use, as long as you can get rid of it. Before you panic, pay very close attention to the boss right now. Because once a certain amount of these go on the ground, yes, of course, we're focusing the ad, that big boom is going to happen. Get out or die. Very simple. So when the fire mechanic is coming, be very mindful that that is coming up very, very soon. Within about 30 seconds, maybe less. Now, the next mechanic we've got, of course, is the ice. Again, he'll still punch the ground with lightning, so make sure you block that. You can outheal it, of course, if your healer is very strong, but just for mechanic's sake, make sure you block it. The ice will go under your feet, and you can actually kite it around in a circle until four of them place on the ground, and then you can just stay out of them and you'll be fine. Instead of the big fire burst from this mechanic you get a big ice one instead and everyone will get stunned which you do need to break free from if you have additional ice damage on you're going to take even more damage you can actually die from this although it's nowhere near as deadly as the fire mechanic so just make sure you keep your cleansers up or watch your feet and try not to stand in too much of it and apart from that it's pretty much it as far as this part of the fight goes it's going to be ice fire ice fire over and over and over and it'll punch the ground with lightning in the meantime, you just keep killing the adds as and when they come up and make sure, of course, that you kite the, the drain ability away from the group. It changes targets when it feels like it and it only comes into the room if there's an ad. Each ad can fire their own one, however. So if you do leave them all alive for too long, you are going to get overwhelmed. So again, fire, get out with the big boom, ice, make sure you keep cleansing and break free when you get stunned. The safest way that I would suggest you do this fight is to focus as much damage on the adds as possible you don't need to go for a big nuke on the boss and drop ulties on it just drop them on the adds and get rid of them nice and quick if you do that you're going to have more time on the boss and you're not going to get overwhelmed with a massive massive amount of adds but as you can see here we are now on two and that is based on health percentages so to start with, of course, you'll have one random ad spawning. You just knock it down, go back to the boss, knock it down, go back to the boss. After 60% or so, sometimes a little bit earlier, you'll end up with two consistently. So you want to make sure you get them down 
quickly. Otherwise, if you put one down and leave the other one open, you're going to end up with another one waking up before you're even ready. So always focus the ads. And then when he goes very, very low health, there'll be an introduction of a new mechanic and, of course, a third ad. So that's when you really want to focus on a lot of AoE damage. And, of course, make sure you maintain your ultimates on those ads, not on the boss. Yes, of course, if you're very experienced, you could hold the boss near the ads and just nuke them. But, of course, that's not for everyone, and we're teaching mechanics here, not nuke stuff. If you want to go for the nuke, by the way, just a bit of a tip. The hitbox on this guy and the ads is really, really messed up. It's not very big at all, despite their size, which means here you can actually have issue targeting them, especially if you're a tank, and you might drop it on the group. Now, you just saw a different mechanic there. Very simply put, it's a lightning stun. If you see an AoE underneath your feet, a tiny, tiny, tiny circle, what you need to do is block. If you block it, once it hits you, you'll be fine. If you don't block it, you'll need to break free because you'll be stunned. There, block. Nice and easy. If you are stunned and you get caught in the drain, because there's now a potential three of them allowed to be in the room because of the low health of the boss, then you are stuffed. You will have ice under your feet or fire under your feet, both of which apply a dot. You'll have a drain from one of those ads and you'll be stunned. You won't have any resources left. You're going to die. So make sure you're very, very careful about your feet placement and make sure that you do block that very, very basic um, lightning mechanic. As you can see there, stunned in the corner is not good. So when it comes to your group composition, if you like, try to set yourself up in a kind of semicircle around the back of the boss for the most of the fight, unless of course you're dealing with the ads. The healer tries to stay in the middle as much as possible. That way you can see all angles and help the tank and the group. Lightning uh, blocking here, obviously you've seen this already. Make sure that the cleansers are on tap. You need as many cleansers as possible throughout the fight, so you are going to have to heavy attack a lot as a healer. And, of course, above all, do not run into the group with the AoEs, if you can help it. Now, again, we did mention this earlier. If your group is set up for a massive amount of recovery, maybe you're using some recovery sets, master stuff from the healer and all manner of different stuff, lots of synergies and such, then you might be in a better position to actually stand in that AoE there and just make sure you block the lightning. You can out-recover if that's even a term, the negative drain. But that's a very, very rare situation and will depend on your group setup and or skills and sets you're using for your group overall. It's not as simple as just stand in it and just wing it. Now, again, this is the most stressful part. This is where people mostly end up getting stunned. So we've got the fire. We make sure we're cleansed all the time. Make sure you do damage to the adds. You can push the boss here, but just remember you could end up with three of those adds in the room. Then you've got stuns, three kites, fire, and the boss. It's going to be a mess. It's literally up to you at this point, but I would highly recommend when you get to here, you do not get execute panic, and you just get rid of the adds. Adds, boss, adds, boss, adds, boss, rinse, repeat. Nothing else changes. There isn't technically a DPS race on the boss. You can fight him for as long as you like. But when you do get down to this phase... If you don't get rid of the adds quick enough when they're on their own, of course, others will spawn up to three. So if you constantly get one down, you're always going to have two alive. If you constantly get two down, you're always going to have one alive. If you've got lots of AoE, you can knock them all down, then go over to the boss like we have now, and then go back again. It's entirely up to you how you deal with it. If you can manage it and survive it with the adds in the room, so be it. If not, play safe. Remember, ice is the big break free mechanic. Fire is the get out of the room mechanic. Very, very simple. Now, of course, on regular vet, this isn't anywhere near as stressful. He has a lot, lot less health. Some of the mechanics aren't even things that you need to avoid. You can actually just stand in them. But if you want the hard mode, you must have done the previous hard mode to be able to access this. Remember, you cannot activate hard mode unless you did the other hard mode first. Now you're going to see some new ads and they hit so bloody hard. Do not run ahead of the tank. Now... We did this, well, a lot of times, to say the least. So um, some of these got pet names. That one there is called a Shiritzo. That's not what he's called, is it? But that's what we ended up calling it. He was called a Shiritzo. The piggies were called Bacon. And the doggies were called Doggies, which is really, really original. But basically, you've got three ads. One looks like a bloody great centipede. The other one is a Durzog or Dog. And the other one is a pig, Pumba, or a massive boar, whichever you want to call it. Those three enemies are very, very important. You will see them on the last boss. You must taunt those as soon as possible as the tank because their heavy attacks are horrendous. They hit incredibly hard. Now, the, uh, the centipede, or shiritsu as we called it, is um, aggressive from range. 
It does have some nasty spit attacks, and the heavy attacks are very, very strong too. The rest of them will have to be close range. They do actually come straight in. But after the spit, it will come in afterwards anyway, so... It's a bit tricky for the tank to manage it sometimes, position-wise, but don't panic. Once you've got the taunt on it, once it's finished its rotation, it will come in nonetheless. Again, make sure you pick up all these mushrooms, because we're going for a second secret here. And uh, as we go underneath this bridge, there'll be a door to unlock. You must have lockpicks, yes. Break the door open. Let the tank go first. If the tank doesn't go first, you're going to die as soon as you go in the room. Now, the three ads we were talking about a moment ago, the most important thing to note about those is that they can go into a magma shell type um, form, which will make them do really high area of effect flame damage. So once they get to that stage, you even need your tank to be buffing the hell out of themselves or barriers from your group or whatever, or the DPS need to kill it nice and quick, which is obviously the easier option if you've got loads of damage. If you don't have loads of damage, don't panic. Just make sure your heals are stronger. Those vampires, those wolves, and those three adds I mentioned, all of them in this dungeon hit like steam trains on acid. So make sure the tank maintains taunts on those. Again, we activated the uh, the module over there, picked up a potion, and now we have our second buff, which is mega. Now, we're going to have one more of those before we get to the last boss, because then we can use them in the last boss. There's nothing to activate. They just give us passive bonuses, which is actually bloody handy. You don't have to have them if you don't want to. It will take you a little bit longer, especially if you're going for true genius or anything like that, but they are helpful. Now, when we go through to the last boss, before we get to the ad pulls, obviously, I am going to demonstrate two variations of how to deal with a certain mechanic in there. But that mechanic, again, is relevant based on this particular bonus you're now about to receive. Remember Juffy mode? from earlier, where we turned into a giant hulk and werewolf, or behemoth, whichever they want to call it, you are going to have to learn this. I know lots of people like to press their skills and not look at them. That's fun, but you need to know what they do. This dude obviously don't stand in the big boom, that'll kill you. When you turn into the hulk and werewolf, from left to right, number one is taunt, number two is gap closer, number three is an interrupt, don't waste it. Number four is a stomp on the ground for a long-ranged uh, knockdown or hit. Number five is a heal, and then it turns into an AoE ice ability. And your ultimate is a big, big slam on the ground, and it gives everyone a synergy to make them permanently crit while it's active. Make sure you learn these skills, because you are going to need them in order to control the adds. Now, if you're on regular vet, it's not that stressful. You can actually just run in and slap stuff. No problem whatsoever. The mechanics are there, but you can out-nuke them, basically, in Juffy mode and just go mad. But if you are on hard mode, it's very, very important that you understand what they do. What you're going to need to do, and this is a big tip before we get there, you need to make sure that your number three and number four are not being wasted. Don't just spam them as DPS abilities. Only use them at certain times. That will become more clear later once we get there, of course. Now we'll go into another secret. Remember, pick up the mushrooms before you go in there. We have the same rules as the last one. Tank goes first. There should be an unwritten rule anyway for all groups in all situations. But I just need to remind you, tanks go first. Also, rip lock picks are run out. This ad pull, again, is much like the last one. Very small, only a couple of enemies. Three, I think but they will kill the group almost instantly. It's not even their heavy attacks that will kill the DPS. Their, their regular light attacks will wipe out even a fairly healthy Stam or Mag DPS very, very quickly. So let the tank go first. Remember these adds here? That one has a ranged attack, but it will come in anyway. And of course, the Magma Shell effect they just did there will do really high damage, especially to the tank. So you need to make sure that you get rid of them nice and quick. Or push big heals during that phase now the final buff that we're getting will give us all of our shinies at once so we've now got recovery we've got extra damage and we've also got extra health which is going to be very very helpful on the last fight because you are going to get hit quite hard even the chunkiest of tanks will be challenged in this fight and just bear in mind this is very important to note it's not necessarily about how chunky you are although it helps it's about your feet placement. So squishy tanks will have to dodge roll like hell in here if you want to survive. Chunky tanks 
will be fine standing still for longer, but there are some mechanics you do not want to stand in, and it will make it a lot, lot easier. If you do stand in it, it's just going to put pressure on your healer. So pay very close attention to the floor. This ad pull is nice and simple. Grab the white wolf and the doggy and turn them away from the group as the tank. Pull all the rest of the stuff in as and when you can. They are all ranged. Make sure they're turned away also from the group and watch your feet. The white wolf will put lightning on the ground so don't stand on each other. And of course the archers can put down arrow sprays. Again, as long as you watch your feet and don't stand in front of anything, you should be relatively fine. But again, your tank must maintain taunts on the big stuff. They will kill the group very, very fast. I've actually seen people wipe on repeat on these ad pulls just because of low maintenance on taunt on the white wolf. It's very powerful. And if you've done Moon Hunter Keep again before, you, you will already have flashbacks from that horrible boss. Now, you've seen these before. You know what they do. Punch in the ground is a lightning. Block it. Ice, obviously, avoid it. Kite it. Place it on the ground. Use your purge if you have to. Fire. Purge it. Don't stand in it. And the big kiting AoE. Stand in if you've got loads of recovery. If you don't, then obviously kite it around the room. As you can see, they're stacked quite nicely. That wasn't even a problem. We barely saw any mechanics anyway. If you've got low DPS, you'll see more mechanics. It's not a problem as long as you're good at them. Now, the very, very important part. This can be extremely simple if you allow it to be simple. To start with, you'll get a bit of a refresher with the werewolf mechanics. You'll get to see what the abilities do, you'll get to apply yourself in them and familiarize yourself with what they are for. But if you don't pay close attention, you are going to fail. Most people spend an, a massive amount of time in here not paying attention and failing. Once you've nailed it, it's easy. Honestly, it's very, very simple. But you have to coordinate. So pick up your werewolf buff, start slapping these, and once all the vents are down, then of course we can start fighting the boss. Then we can activate hard mode. Now, that lightning thing there, that is your number four or your L1. If you use that stomp even from range, you'll turn it off. If you don't do it, then the group will get peppered in nasty lightning shots and they will die very, very quickly. Even with a million health, you are going to die. The rest of the time, it's quite simple. Light attack one, or square, or taunt, or whatever button it is on Xbox. And then, if not, you can light attack triangle, or number two, which is your gap closer. Obviously, you want to take advantage of your gap closer in certain situations to get you from one place to another. But it's got a very, very quick cooldown, so you can literally use that as a spam ball if you want. Something that's very important, though, your light attacks are going to hit quite hard, and your heavy attacks will actually do air of effect damage. We hit the banner. Boss is coming in. He's got more health. There are three major stages, fire, poison, and lightning. The first stage is fire, and we follow a mechanic, as you can see here. We are staying between the two stacks of um, stone husks. There's four either side, up against the wall. We stand between those, because we want to fight here. But the mechanic, or the stage that I like to call it, is pop, 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 stop. What that is, is as you can see here, he's got all these fire pops that go on the ground. There'll be three of them. Yes, there's several on the ground, but he will do three pops. One, two, three, and then stop moving. If the tank goes backwards, 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 then stand still, you'll miss every single one of them. You won't get the nasty fire dot on you. You will still receive one from his frontal attack, but you won't get the pops. And every single time they have faded from the ground, which we'll see in a moment, they're now going to disappear. He will go one, two, three, and then stop doing it again. As you can see here, there's one under the tank. There's another one. There's another one. Stop. So, if the tank just goes backwards, 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 stand still, you're all good. Every 10%, the boss will spawn one of these minions at random. It will either be one of the Shiritsos, it will be a piggy, or it will be a dog. Now, you must bring that in with the boss. You must kill it nice and quick, especially since it goes magma shell. And, of course, you've got to continue with your pop, 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 stop mechanics as the tank. Now, just bear in mind, of course, the heavy attack from the boss can be blocked. Just before... The, the three pops, he'll also throw out a frontal AoE and then he'll try and stab you really, really hard. That can also be blocked or dodged if you're very good at timing it. As soon as he puts the fire out, basically three, two, one, dodge, you're good. But if you're a big chunky tank and you're avoiding these fire pops on the ground, you should be absolutely fine. You can just block it in the face anyway. Again, there's your pop, pop again, and one more, and then stand still. That's for the tank. The group, you can basically just mind your feet and stay in the heels. 
Now, what I would recommend is that you have multiple barriers in your group. If you have multiple barriers, every time these ads come in, wait until they go into magma shell and then pop the barrier for the group while still trying to kill it. That will help the tank, it will help the, the healer, and it will also help the DPS survive a massive amount. Um, what you can do is you can put barrier on three people or even four if you really want to, just in case you've got gaps. That is something for survival. If you want to go and nuke them, then of course you're going to be pushing the bot a lot, lot quicker than you intend to, and you're going to have the ads in a lot sooner. You might end up with two of them or even three. That happens, the tank is in serious trouble. Now again, once the three ads are gone, that's when we're going werewolf. So for this whole phase, that's what you need to do. Pop, 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 stop. That's for the tank. Back, 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 stand still. Now the husks are left and right. We're going to get one each. Taunt it and move it away. Because if they're too close, they're going to beam each other and empower. You can see we've got two members on the left-hand side of the room and me and Bob on the right. What you need to do is maintain your taunt. And if you see this happening, you need to get out of it, which is going to hit really hard. Or you can drop your ultimate on it to stop them from doing it. If you do that, everyone will get synergy and that will help. In the meantime, if he does this, when he crouches and does his little Hulk smash movement, he'll spit into the air. You must use number three the slam to interrupt if you don't interrupt it it's going to kill the group so two basic mechanics that you got to watch out for the big spread in aoe you can either gap closer to an ad and get out of or drop an ulti on his head or the channeled mechanic where he goes hulk smash and then spits into the air you have to slam it so those two abilities you must maintain this is the third one that there which was behind me hit really bloody hard because i missed it if you stomp it with number four then it won't happen, and people won't get hit by the nasty, nasty lightning. So three major mechanics with two major abilities that you've got to watch your cooldowns on. Once the enemies are dead, go and help somebody else kill theirs. If you want to, you can keep up your heal ability on number five, and that will help you get health back every time you heavy attack, light attack, or use any skills. Bear in mind, of course, when you're using your ultimate with the synergy from somebody else, you will crit like hell. So to recap over that, since it's a little confusing, uh, number three... The middle skill is your slam, only use it when they need interrupting, when they're spitting into the air. Number four is the stomp, you need to aim at any lightning stuff on the ground, and your ulti you use when it's a spread in AoE. Or gap closer out of there to one of the adds in order to get away from it so it doesn't blow up and kill you. Every person must have their own ad, maintain number one, which is your taunt, and they must not be together. Now this is phase number two, of course, as you can see. Instead of pop, 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 stop for the tank, the tank can basically stand still. Make sure you grab the adds every 10% and kill them. There's a piggy there. Keep it close. When it goes magma shell, either drop ulties or drop a barrier. Whatever helps. Now, instead of triple pop and stop, there's actually two placements. There's two poison placements. Once they land, they'll spin and they will erupt with these horrible across-the-ground poison splatters that will go through the group. They don't hit very hard, but they do stun. So what you need to do is when they're aiming at you, simply block until it's over and then carry on as usual. As a tank, you're probably holding block all the time anyway, so you should be fine. But as the group, you want to make sure that you do not get stunned if you can help it, as you saw there. Because you're going to nuke your resources, keep breaking free all the time. If the tank gets stunned, they're pretty much screwed. Yes, there's still fire in a room. It's not the same as the first phase. The first phase was frontal fire and then pop, 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 stop. This phase is just frontal fire and then two poison placements. Again, whenever they're on the ground, make sure that you're blocking when the poison's coming to you, and then carry on as normal. It should be just fine. The only thing you do have to be aware of, however, is once the poison um, spinning and channeling has finished on the ground, it will explode, so you don't want to stand near it. Very simple. Again, the ads will come every 10%. You can pace your DPS. There is no um, DPS check for this. You can take as long as you like. But, obviously, the longer the fight goes on, the more aggressive you're going to have to be with your heals and your active survival buffs for your group. So, you're going to need barrier more often and all that kind of stuff. Again, adds always are primary. You can, of course, nuke them when you go into werewolf mode, but there's no need to push them through to that phase. Kill an ad, push the boss, kill an ad, push the boss, and just rinse repeat until his health is low enough for him to disappear again. And in which case, we will then turn into werewolves again with a slight twist. This is the same as before go to the same side as you always do obviously coordinate there with your group get one at each taunt it and move away but if the screen grows gray and they have a big yellow orb above their head it's actually their, their head i think um you need to swap with somebody as you can see here raise their head up in the air big orb i need to swap with bob and then taunt his and he needs to taunt mine obviously if they get too close to each other spread out and separate 
if you don't manage to swap with somebody else, you are going to get nuked and one-shotted. So make sure you pay very close attention to this. Now I'm going to show you a different way to do it. If you're very experienced, of course, separate them, keep yours taunted, stay alive, and make sure you get rid of the lightning, interrupt stuff, and use ulties. But if you're really experienced and you can save your ultimates up to this phase, everybody taunt their own ad and cross over to your friends, and it'll stack in the middle. One ultimate down. Everyone's got crits, heavy attack like hell, breathe in the circle. When that spread in AoE happens, second ultimate down. Everybody carry on. Third one, third ultimate down. If anybody dies, drop another ulti and you'll res them instantly. Nice and simple. You must all have an ultimate in order to pull that off. Just time it, one ultimate, and then just have a gap of five seconds between each one. Bear in mind, of course, you may still have to use your slam ability if you want to interrupt them. Yes, that was very, very simple and looked really, really easy to do. It takes a little bit of coordination. You've got to get them in the middle quick. Yes, it's obviously much, much faster. But learn your mechanics first, then try that stuff afterwards. Now, the last phase, very simple. He's lightning form. So there's no fire on the ground, apart from the frontal stuff that he does. There's no poison on the ground. But there's lightning instead, and we all get a nasty lightning AoE that we have to kite. But the trick to this is to stay as close to each other as possible, because every three seconds he's going to do that. He's going to pin someone to the ground. Now, the trick to this, of course, is to break people free as soon as possible. And the way to do that is your coordination. You must hug up very very tightly and every three seconds literally just spam that synergy button until you definitely break someone out if they get left behind like i did there you're dead once that phase is over you stop running around the room and you just hit the boss and the ads now there's gonna be an ad every 10 percent, and then there's gonna be none left at all so just focus add boss add boss add boss there is an interrupt as well so pay close attention Again, like I said earlier, you need to stay close to each other. If you spam that synergy button over and over and over and over and over and over while hugging up to your group, you're never going to fail and people will be picked up straight away. There's always three. So make sure that you've done three of them and then you can stop. Obviously, if you can focus on the ad during that time, then great. But if you can't, it's not the end of the world as long as it's taunted. If you do overburn the boss, you are going to get in trouble because now you're going to have to manage with more than one ad and you really don't want to do that, especially if people end up dead. So this can get very, very tricky. You want to make sure that you maintain your DPS on the ads only, so then you don't have to have staggered effects. Now, as you see here, we're trying to get these reses in. This is really, really tricky. But you have to run around the room and avoid overlapping your lightning on top of somebody else. So as you can see here, we've got a little bit lucky there because I could have got caught. You have to run over and pick up that synergy. You have to get people out. Stay as close to each other, but as far away from the lightning as you can. If you constantly spam that synergy, you can't fail it if someone accidentally gets pinned under your feet. After three pins, stop what you're doing, stand still and hit the ad. The tank needs to turn the boss away at all times because there is an interrupt mechanic that you'll have to do. Otherwise, it will uh, channel an AoE at the group. There is, of course, a charge attack that you'll have to block, which will be a random player. But the rest is rinse repeat. When the lightning comes down, all run together. Keep the boss taunted. Break free with the synergy. Keep running, keep running, keep running. Stay together. As soon as someone goes down, pick them up again. Nice and easy. The further away you are from the lightning, the more room you've got if you have to wiggle your position a little bit. Again, after every 10%, there will be an ad. You will have to deal with it. Once the third ad is dead, there's no more ads in the room. It's just you and the boss. So you do get a very short window here to do damage. You can either burn one ad per phase if you think you can manage it, or you can just maintain damage while you're here and then just move out nice and quickly and deal with it phase by phase by phase. You can take as long as you like with this, but you have to maintain very clear, concise mechanics. If you don't focus on the synergy unpinning, much like the Ozara fight in Sanctum Ophidia, you are going to end up dead. It's very, very difficult to recover. That was one pin, then it's going to be a second. Break them out. Every three to five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Then we'll get someone else pinned. Break them out as soon as you can. Yeah, my count was a little off, but still, between three to five seconds, there'll be a pin, and then another one, and another one, and another one. There'll always be three, no more. Once that's over, you've definitely seen the third pin. Stop running around the room and kill him. And this is rinse repeat for the rest of the fight. If we get any more lightning phases, we're just gonna go around the room again. Nice and easy. Yes, of course, it's much easier to manage when there's no ads in the room, so you want to break those away from the fight as soon as possible. But this particular phase here, I mean, at the end, you can just basically kite it around that pillar, and you'll be fine as long as you don't overlap each other with the light. And that's basically it. 
Now, the non-hard mode version, obviously, is a lot, lot simpler than that. Only two people get the lightning, not four, so you can basically kite them away while the rest of them stand still. The boss has a lot less health, and, of course, it's nowhere near as aggressive. The ads are tiny. They don't take a lot to kill at all. It's much, much easier to manage. And, of course, the werewolf phase, you can basically just smack them without even noticing what the abilities do. But if you do pay close attention to what their mechanics are, or if you can maintain your ultimate throughout the fight without dying enough for you to then nuke them all together by jumping on them with the Ultra Werewolf ultimate, then of course that's also an option. This will of course all be in the written guide as well, especially if you're trying to figure out what the Werewolf abilities do. So thank you very much for watching, a huge appreciate support. If you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. Of course, it is free. And of course, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for all the social media stuff, Patreon, and all manner of other areas of support that you can take advantage of if you want to. Just look at the link tree um, link below and everything is going to be there. Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.